Hi, I'm Cindy Jatul. I teach biology and biotech at Roosevelt High School. And I used to be a nurse practitioner and genetics is a really important field when it comes to healthcare because the more that we know about genetics, the better we can be at diagnosing things, which gives us tools in helping prevent disease. And genetics also is really helping us come up with better treatments. Um, so this is an incredibly important field. Today, we're gonna to be talking specifically about mutations. And when people hear the word mutation, sometimes they think, Oh, those are negative things that happen and, you know, have, uh, create strange outcomes. Um, but if it weren't for mutations, then there would be a lot less genetic variation. There would be a lot less, um, variation in phenotype or the traits that, that living things have. And without all of that variation, we might all still be little one-celled organisms swimming around in the primordial soup. So although mutations have a negative connotation, they really serve an important role in creating genetic variation. Not to say that they can't be negative, because certainly they can be, but it's like anything else in life. There are good things and bad things. So I'm going to shrink myself down and we're going to proceed with um, talking about mutations and then I'm going to show you a reading that will be helpful for you as well as um, a worksheet that will allow you to practice finding mutations and then determining the significance of those mutations. Okay, so here we go. Basically, mutations are changes in DNA. They may or may not affect the traits. Okay, so simply put, mutations are just changes in the DNA code. And this could be a one base change, or it could be more. And that it might mean that a base has been, uh, is, has been taken out, added, or exchanged. So when I say base and DNA code, here's DNA and here's the the A with the T and the C with the G, these are the bases that I'm referring to. Okay, so mutations can happen when the DNA is being replicated, when it's being copied, which it must be copied before cells are to divide, before mitosis, before meiosis, the DNA is copied. And while it's being copied, mistakes can happen. Okay, uh, mutations can also happen throughout life. Um, things like UV light, smoking, exposure to other forms of radiation, other toxins can cause mutations in the DNA. The good news is that cells have protective mechanisms that allow them to go in and repair damaged DNA and fix those mutations. This doesn't always work, but cells do have mechanisms for doing this. Um, unfortunately, as we get older, we're, we're less and less capable of doing this kind of repair. Okay, so very quickly, there's a variety of different kinds of mutations, and we're going to go through these in more detail, and they are in your reading, which we will also review. Um, so we have point mutations, insertion, and deletion types of mutations. So let's take a look at these different types of mutations. Okay, starting with point mutations. So in this case, a single nucleotide has been changed in the, in the DNA sequence. Okay, so in this illustration up here, um, an A has been changed to a C. And this type of mutation can change the protein product in the following ways. Okay, so we have missense mutations in which this 
change, this one base change is going to result in a different amino acid being coded for within that final protein. A nonsense mutation is changing the codon into a stop signal. This is going to cause the protein to be significantly shorter. That is a big impact, generally negative. Silent mutations can happen in which the change in the amino, um, I'm sorry, the change in the, the nucleotide base does not change the amino acid and nothing happens. It's called a silent mutation. Then we come to more serious kinds of mutations mutations that are going to have a, a larger impact. Um, and these are sometimes referred to in, as indels or insertions and deletions. So in this case, um, a base accidentally is added to the DNA code as it's being replicated. So here there's an insertion of a T. Or the opposite can happen. A um, base will be completely left out as the DNA is being copied. So in this case, the mutated form of the DNA does not have an A. All right. These are very, very significant because these kinds of mutations cause a frame shift mutation, which means the, the groups of nucleotides that form the codon are changed. And these usually lead to very significant differences in the outcome of the protein. So for example, down here we have the normal DNA, and here we have the mutated DNA, in which there has been an insertion of an extra U. That changes the whole way that this is going to be decoded and translated into a protein. In fact, what happens here is there's a stop codon that ends this protein prematurely. Okay, so that's a quick overview. Now we're going to take a look at the reading that is available for you. Here is the reading which is available for you on your Schoology page, which goes over uh, the way that mutations happen and the, the impacts that these mutations might have. So again, Mutation is any change in the DNA nucleotide sequence. And when mutation occurs, you may have a new allele or new version of the gene. Now, some mutations are inherited. Your parents had them, and they can be passed on to you. As we, we see here, a mutation has occurred in the germline, which refers to eggs and sperm. and if that, if a mutation happens in the DNA in those particular cells, then it is passed on to the child of that couple. Um, mutations, though, can also happen to somatic cells. Are those are cells that aren't the eggs and the sperm, and those aren't inheritable, and they, but they may or may not affect that particular individual. And as we talked about earlier, um, new mutations can occur over the course of a person's life due to mistakes during replication or because of environmental factors. Okay, so this is good information for everybody because you can reduce your risk of new mutations by avoiding things like tobacco, alcohol, and get more regular exercise and checkups. Okay, so we go down here and we remember that mutations might have no effect at all. They may be helpful when alleles are coding for a new version of a protein that turns out to be beneficial. Okay, or they may code for non-functional proteins resulting in a negative impact. 
And this is the, the reason for a lot of genetic diseases, in fact, um, is that the, the, when the protein doesn't work the way it's supposed to, you can get diseases like Huntington's disease, cystic fib fibrosis, sickle cell disease, etc. Okay, so let's take a look again at these various types of mutations which can occur. All right, so here we have our point mutation with the substitution here when we have an A being replaced with a G. Insertions, extra nucleotides have been inserted here. Deletion, um, we're now missing nucleotides from the DNA strand. Now, the effects of these mutations. A DNA mutation that results in the same amino acid won't change the protein. So why is that possible? Well, if you remember the, the way that the DNA to protein code works, there are 64 codons, but there are only 20 amino acids. So some codons code for the same amino acid. So that means it might not change the amino acid at all. However, it can happen that you do replace one amino acid with another, as we see in this example here. So here we have the DNA, and three nucleotides represents a codon. The first one stands for our codes for methionine, and this is the same here, methionine. But as we go along out here, we find out that this codon has changed and instead of leucine, we have isoleucine. This one change in one amino acid is the explanation for sickle cell disease, a very, very serious disease. Okay, a mutation that produces an early stop in the middle of a protein, shortens a protein, changes its shape, and so this is a serious kind of mutation. Duchenne muscular dystrophy is caused by this type of nonsense mutation. Um, people ask about mutations in cancer. Some cancers are caused by mutations. And cancer occurs when mutations have affected the genes that control the cell cycle, resulting in uncontrolled cell division. Okay, so here we have a normal cell division going on, and then we have extra and even more extra, and this is uncontrolled cell growth. Now, why are individuals in a population different from one another? So as I said at the very beginning, mutations are a reason for variation between individuals. Meiosis is also a cause for new combinations of alleles to be inherited by the next generation. And then mutations that occur throughout life will also cause differences between people. And how much variation is there? Well, about one in every 1,000 nucleotides is different between two people. That means that there's a 0.1% difference, and when we realize that we have about 3 billion nucleotides in our DNA, inside each and every cell, that means there are approximately 3 million nucleotide differences between two people. So this is a lot of variation between people, and it is what has uh, been one of the factors behind evolution. Okay, so this reading is available to you, and I highly recommend that you make a copy of it and can refer to it at later times. Now, let's take a look at this practice worksheet, because this will help you to really understand how mutations work, the different types of mutations, and then their impacts on the uh, amino acid sequence and eventually the protein. So the way this works is we have 
uh, an original strand of DNA, obviously a very short strand of DNA. If it turns out we have 3 billion bases in our DNA, this is a very, very short strand, but that's okay. You'll get the point. So here's the original strand, and then we have four mutated strands. And the idea is to compare the original strand to the mutated strands, find the mutation, and then using your DNA to amino acid codon wheel, determine the amino acid sequence so you can see what the impact of the mutations have been. Um, there um, is a key available, I will show you that, as well as a optional worksheet that you can use to keep track of the differences that you see. Okay, so let's take a look at this first one together. Here's mutation number one. So we can just look at it codon by codon. First codon is the same. Second codon is the same. Third codon is the same. Fourth codon is the same. Fifth codon, sixth, seventh, eighth, all the same. And then we get out here to the ninth codon and wait a minute, the original is T-A-T -T, and this one is T-A-A. -A. That's the mutation. We go along, the rest of them are the same. But right here at the ninth codon is a mutation. Okay, so let's take a look at the key and um, we'll show you what that, how that impacts the amino acids. Here is the key. And so in this key now we have the amino acids determined by using that DNA to amino acid codon wheel, all right? And so we have our mutation right here, which we discovered at the ninth codon. And it turns out now, instead of coding for tyrosine, this um, codon, TAA, encodes for the stop message, which ends the building of the protein right here. So obviously this is quite a significant mutation. Now let's take a look at how you could fill out your your optional worksheet for this. Here is the mutations table worksheet that you can use to keep track of the changes. So we're, we're going to describe the mutation. Where did it happen? What kind, what, what nucleotide was changed or what base was changed um, to what what type of mutation is it, what happened to the amino acid, and what's the effect on the protein. Okay, so let's take a look at the key for this first one. Okay, so when we compared the original DNA to the mutated strand, we noticed that there was a change in the ninth codon. The nucleotide was changed from a T to an A, what type of mutation? Well, that's a, a point mutation. We figured out that a tyrosine was changed to stop. And the impact of that is that an early stop is going to result in a shortened protein. Okay, so I would like to go through one more together and then leave the rest up to you to work on. Okay, back to the original worksheet. Now we're going to look at mutation two and see how it compares to the original DNA. So don't compare it to this mutant, compare it to the original DNA. Okay, so first codon is the same, second is the same, third is the same, fourth is the same, fifth is the same, sixth, GGT, GGG. Okay, so there's our mutation. Let's take a look at what that does to the amino acids. Okay, here's mutation 2, GGT instead of GGG, and GGG encodes for glycine, and it turns out GGT also encodes for glycine. So this is a silent mutation. It really isn't having an impact on the amino acid here, nor will it have an impact on the final protein. So if you want to record that on this optional table, 
we can write down that we found the mutation in the 6 codon. A G was changed to a T. It's a point mutation. It turns out there was no change in the amino acid sequence. Therefore, there's no change to the protein. Okay, so we've done two together. I think it's best if you work through the, the other two on your own. There will be keys available, but go ahead and do your best to work through this and see if you can find the mutations and determine the impact of those mutations on the eventual protein. So in summary, what I hope you have come away with from this little lesson is that mutations really are a simple idea. They're just changes in the DNA code. However, these changes can be extremely significant if they result in a change in an amino acid or in a change in more than one amino acid, and then we have really significantly changed the protein. So um, these mutations can happen to people as they're doing meiosis, and there they'll, they'll be changes in the germline, in the eggs and the sperm, which can then go on and become inherited type of mutations. Or these are mutations that occur throughout a person's lifetime, and they really only impact that one individual if they impact them at all. So that's the summary of mutations. Please work on that worksheet, because when you practice, then you'll have a better understanding of, of what mutations are and what kinds of impacts they may or may not have on the final protein, and the final protein is going to be what determines traits. Okay, thank you very much. See you next time.